Auditor Fence is a relatively new company to the firearms industry. They've been shipping guns since about 2015, and really, they've found a place in the market. A quality handgun, as it can carry, concealed carry type handgun, in that $400 range to $500 range, with a lot of features you find on more expensive guns. You can change the entire lower to different uh, colors, and uh, it has an interchangeable back strap as well. One of the things I like about this is they, they really thought about incorporating a lot of things that are normally custom into a factory built gun. Some of these things include ambi controls, heavy texturing on the, on the frame, on the slide, some uh, grip cuts. Also, the way the serial number is on the entire sear system, here, sear striker system. All right, well, let's run a magazine or two through it and see how she works out. The Honor Defense currently is available in 9 millimeter. And as I said, this gun was pretty much built from the ground up as a concealed carry firearm. Lots of, lots of texture with those deep cuts on the slide, but not in a way that's going to be abusive to your hands, but you're going to be able to get good control of it. Frames textured high and low, double action, striker fired, controls are all very flat. Let's give it a run. So, very short trigger pull, short reset as well. So you could fire that gun pretty quickly, I, I imagine. Let's try. Quick resets. So the Honor Defense, this is a gun, we're gonna go inside in gun tech. Hey. Honor Defense is stepping it up with new mods and updates. We'll have to keep an eye on them. Next is an innovative bipod solution you're going to love. Hey, Daryl, check this out. One of the things I've found is when you're hunting out in the field, a bipod is a great accessory for making those long shots. It has one major defect, though. They'll give you a little side-to-side -side motion, but what if that game goes running across uh, and you know it's at your distance and now you have to on the ground kind of scoot yourself around well upriser arms came up with a real simple but clever idea tell us about it so we have here the bipod swivel uh, we came up with this idea about five years ago uh, we have lots of hunters especially farm hunters who like to use this for chasing coyotes that kind of stuff um, so very simple design that we have here um, unlock the knob Open the swivel up, so you take your swivel stud out of your rifle, uh, which most of them are a standard 1032 screw. Uh, 1030 screw is, 32 screw is in the package. You bolt this right to your gun. Then you have your swivel stud that's already back on your stud. You can attach your bipod right to it. And now you have 360 degrees of panty movement anytime. And then when you're back to center, you just turn the knob to lock it, and then your bipod is locked in the stationary position. Well, Ed, show us now how this uh, front and pivot works. So yeah, very simple operation. Pull the knob down, turn 90 degrees to unlock, and now you have 360 ah, degrees of look at that. motion. Whoa, yeah, we can get all over the place with this. Look at that, man, nice. So in the field, that could be a huge advantage because out hunting, it isn't like a bench. It's uneven, uneven. or at least it always seems to be for me. Yep. I always pick the worst spot. Yeah. How much does this cost? Uh, these retail for $69.99. That's very reasonable because it helps you make that shot. Michael. Yes. Maximum, what is your company all about? Maximum Defense, what do you produce? What are your concepts and what is your place in the market? Well, I mean, we're primarily a defense development company that, and our primary goal is to, you know, develop, you know, uh, intellectual property that benefits, you know, the military, uh, government agency, you know, law enforcement market. Um, and our big thing is, is uh, you know, really interviewing and finding out what the true needs are um, and capabilities that are needed. Um, you know, one of the first products we developed and brought to market was the Maxim CQB stock. 
And uh, basically, that there was a need for a duty quality stock. There was other ones on the market, but they just wouldn't hold up mm. to the uh, military qualification test. So we came up with the Maxim CQB stock was part of the surge um, program with the Navy for the suppressed upper receiver group. And uh, you know, they basically needed to take two inches off the back of the gun, you know, to you know for that program. So we developed this um, uh, and basically made it, you know, simple and rugged and. Uh, you know, was able to take two inches off the back end of the rifle with that. You know, we also beefed up the rods. All our, all our competitors, you know, use a quarter inch rod. We use a three eighth inch rod. Um, the new ones have a, a 17 four stainless. Um, so we have versions that are marinized with the, uh, you know, a stainless steel button, stainless steel rods. Um, and then, uh, and then from there, we, we hooked up with Colt and we did a, a OEM product for them for their SCW. And with them, you know, they brought in the metallurgist and, and did all the military qualifications and we were able to make some more improvements on the product. And so now um, we are the, from my understanding, we're the only PW style stock that's in federal service. We did a, we did a custom version of this for the FBI HRT um, that has the uh, QD mounts back here. Now this one has a rapid deployment feature, so you don't have to push any buttons. That's nice. But the idea is that you can reach up with your thumb and collapse it down without ever losing control of the weapon. Because we did a lot of interviewing on right. you know, how these... Right, people are doing fiddling around, that's how and, and they you talk get an about AD. How they're, you know, running around, you know, they're riding around in vehicles, they got them down by the doors or by the consoles, and when they jump out, they don't want to be fumbling out, they just want to be able to grab it like this and extend that arm and go. Now, one of the things they talked about is that it's designed as a CQB stock. So it's normally shot in this position or this position, you know, and so we did the extended cheek weld to give you that continuous cheek weld, which a lot of, a lot of them miss that. Um, the other thing they wanted is they wanted a preset. So when they, when they deployed the stock, it went back to their favorite. So to keep it simple, we just, you know, we just threaded a hole and have a set screw that when that comes back, it hits this button, it stops the reverse movement, and then this button locks it into place. So that's where you can personalize the stock to yep. each per person. That's right. great, personalize the stock. Right, and then from here, we, uh, on this product, then we partnered up with SB Tactical and have come out, came out with the, uh, the PDW brace. So we now work with them and they have the, the patent on the arm brace. And so we came out with this, so now this is considered a pistol. Um, but with the reversal with the ATF now, um, this makes it a much more desirable platform. And uh, so they do this one for us, and then we also make all the hardware. They have a version of theirs, but it's all Maxim hardware. It's just that the tube is a standard length carbine tube, where ours still has the you know the, the true PDW length in it. So that's the, the main difference between the two. Um, and you know we've also come up with other things with the uh, with the lower. The, the lower sling mount, so we have a D-ring version, and we also have a, a, a limited rotation QD mount as well um, for this for this product. Um, we have a subcompact version of this that we did for uh, for Colt, and then we're going to be bringing that to market uh, by NRA show. Um, and then from there, we uh, you know now have our new we you know we had another project with the FBI that they needed a 11 inch barrel. They wanted a Mark 18 upper to go on their M4s. And anyway, but they wanted it 11 inches instead of 10.3 or 10.5 because they were getting, you know, 300 feet per, you know, per, you know, 300 feet per second, you know, more velocity out right. of that, in, that barrel. So it matters and 5.56, five, barrel length matters. These little eight inches and so on, right. you're losing a lot. So, but then, you know, but then what they talked about was the, uh, that they wanted to go on an M4, they want to use the M4 lowers, they want to use the M4 BCG. But when they when they put suppressors on it, it takes the cyclic rate up to a thousand to eleven hundred, which is way too fast. So they wanted a regulated DI system. So we now have this is a regulated DI system with a four, four place settings. So you have your closed, your suppressed, your normal, and then an adverse setting. So and when you take it to the suppressed mode, it takes it from that eleven hundred thousand down to we were averaging seven ninety to eight twenty, you know, cyclic rate on. Right. So. Now, no. did you say an adverse setting? Adverse, yeah. So then you can crank it all the way up and open up wide open. So when things get all mucked up, that is you still blow everything out. Blow everything out and continue to function when you really need it to. So um, and that's where we, you know, then we brought in uh, Tato and Boone, and we have those guys basically go out and try to break these things and see where we can make more and more improvements. And mm -hmm. um, 
uh, we, you know, we take it very seriously, you know. And then some of the other things on this design is that, you know, we talked about they needed M lock, you know, which is becoming the new standard. But so many of the M lock uh, rails get so fat, you know, the big octagon things that it's hard, you know. And when you start putting Picatinis on stuff, it gets, you know, too big and too fat to hold. So we came up with a new slimline design that's designed that when you do put the Picatinis on, it's the same size as a normal quad rail. But when you take when you take them off, now you got this slimline profile. And they also um, to keep that we have the, we put the shelf on here as a gripping point. You know, because those guys, you know, they're not up over the top grabbing it like this, but it does give them that gripping point that they that they need. Um, and then we have proprietary M lock systems as well that are designed to go specifically by slot, where so they're a little out of M lock spec. They're much more useful, and we have some other new enhancements, improvements that will be coming out as well. Is all of this now available yep. to the civilian market as well? Yes. So, and it's the same thing. We have our limited rotation QD mounts in, in steel up here, and uh, it's got a. Uh, we have, and we, we offer this as a, a standalone handguard that's available for mill standard uppers, as well as as the as our whole um, upper system for for the 556. Five, all of our barrels are are made by FN, so they're. You know, the cold hammer forge, machine gun barrels, you know, ready for, for heavy duty. So Looks like Maxim is bringing the, their experience or the experience of field operators to the marketplace, creating the products they need. It's a great approach. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. All right, wandering by the manufacturer section here at SHOT, uh, and I saw uh, Whitworth Precision Machinery, and caught what caught my eye is an AR-10 barrel extension. Really nice looking one. You know, I've been working on a project. I'm trying to graft a, an extension to a DTMS barrel that'll work in an Armalite uh, receiver with an Armalite bolt group. And they said, we'd be happy to make one. And we enjoy making specialty barrel extensions, exotic materials, different feed ramps, and w this is a specialty that we do. We've been making the barrel extensions for years, and we make short runs, prototypes, and something like this, a challenge like this, is really right up our alley. And this is definitely a prototype, because, but I think if we can make this work, um, this is gonna sell quite a few, because there's a lot of guns out there, and nobody's making barrels for them at all. Right? So, um, I don't have a time frame, and you don't have a time frame, uh, but I'm going to get them the barrel and the extension, uh, DPMS and six and a half free more, uh, plus the uh, uh, chamber gauges and uh, an AR-10 carrier and bolt. So that should be enough to get that figured out, right? That'll certainly get us started. We're excited to take a look at it, and again, uh, we, we like these exciting challenges, and we look forward to making the first ones for you. We were talking, everybody knows that you already got the pinhole board and you've already got the gas hole in the barrel. So we need to make them clock up. And if we have to make any adjustments, we want the chamber to be a little bit short. So just a few twists with a reamer and you're ready to go. That's right. And so we'll discuss how we're going to get there and the best way to do it. But I'm really excited and looking forward to this. And we'll keep you posted. Thank you very much for bringing us the project. Brian, thank you very much for taking it on. You're very welcome. Have a good show.